Hello my lovely year two artists. I know over the last couple of weeks you've become absolute experts at powder paint. I've seen some amazing examples in class and some really lovely ones that you've sent in from home. I wonder then if you can help me and tell me what you think is wrong with the powder painting on this part of the screen here on the left. Do you think they've got too much paint? Do you think they've got too much water? Do you think they've got not enough water? Could it be that they've got a dirty brush? Or could it be that they've got a dirty palette? Take a little minute and just have a think. What about this picture? There's definitely something wrong, isn't there? But is it that they've got too much paint? Maybe they've got a dirty brush or a dirty palette. Maybe they've got too much water and maybe not enough water. Have a look at that and see if you did any, anything like that this week and see if you can remember what it might be that they've done wrong. I think you might be able to guess what's wrong with this one. I think they've got a very dirty palette and with all of their paint mixing together. Did that ever happen to you this week? I definitely saw a lot of that in our classroom. What about this one? Do you think they've got a dirty brush? And maybe too much paint? What do you think? What about this one? That's interesting. There's some other colours mixed in, isn't there? Do you think they've got not enough water? Or do you think it might be a dirty brush or a dirty palette? You have a think. Now, we all know it can be really tricky to use powder paints, as you've seen in all of those pictures and as you've probably experienced when you've been doing your powder paints. But we know now that you're all absolute experts, so we'd like you to write some instructions for someone who's never done powder paints before. To tell them how to be successful. Instructions are a special type of writing where you just tell someone how to do something in a really clear and concise way. You don't need to say please. For example, look at these verbs that little Miss Bossy is, is using. They're Bossy verbs. She's saying make, wash, dry, brush. She's not saying, please may you do this thing for me. She's almost giving it like an order. And that's exactly what instructions should be like. I've had a go at writing my own instructions about how we can use powder paint successfully. I wonder if you can have a look at which bossy verbs I've used to start each of my instructions. Shall I do the first one and then you can do the rest on your own? So for the first one, the bossy verb I've used is dip. Why don't you pause the video now and go through and see if you can find the other bossy verbs that I've used. Did you have a go at pausing it? Okay, I'll give you the rest of the answers. So the bossy verb that I've used in my next instruction is dab. Dab your wet paint. The bossy verb that I've used on my third instruction is get. Get a small amount of powder paint on your brush. I wonder if you got these ones right. The next bossy verb that I've used is mix. Mix the paint and water in your paint palette. I'm just telling them what to do. The fifth bossy verb that I've used is wash. Wash your brush before you want to change the colours. That's very important. The sixth one is keep. Keep the colours in your palette separate. That's also very important. You'll notice that in my sentences I haven't used a lot of description. I've only used the information that is absolutely needed. I also haven't said please or thank you because you don't need to in these instructions. If you need a bit of help I've just written some bossy verbs that might help start you off on your instructions. So for the first one, we've got dip. Should we ever think about what we might put on the end of that first instruction? So we've got dip. I'm going to say dip your paintbrush into the water. Full stop. 
you can see from this that I haven't used any description really. Again, I've just used only the information that they need. I'm not writing to entertain. I'm not writing to paint a picture in their head. I'm just writing to give them clear and concise information. Have a go at turning the imperative verb or bossy verb, jab, into an instruction. Remember, make it nice and clear and concise. I think for the bossy word dab, I might write dab off any extra water from your brush. Full stop. Your job now is to have a go at writing your own instructions for how to use powder paint successfully. I'd like you to think about all of the things that we normally think about when we're in class together. Make sure that all of your sentences start, what should they start with? Capital letters. Make sure that all of them end with full stops. Make sure you're really thinking about being clear and concise the whole way through. If there's any spellings that you struggle with, then maybe you could use the technique that we use at school where we write them down on a piece of masking tape and we look and we check to see which one looks right. If you don't have a piece of masking tape, maybe just use a piece of scrap paper. That's what I do sometimes too. OK, good luck here too. I'm sure you're going to be absolutely amazing. And as always, we would absolutely love to see any examples of your work sent to us on email. I can't wait to see all of your clear and bossy instructions. <laughs>